All right, I'm back with another banger. So here's the thing. AWS SysOps is changing to AWS CloudOps in September. So the exam is going to expand. It's no longer just going to be general operation stuff and AWS operations, billing and, and alert management and a few other things, AWS management tools, et cetera. So <clears throat> it's actually going to be focusing more on Docker, infrastructure as code, and a number of different items, right? So what you see here is an example of the current SysOps exam items that are available today. Now, September 29th is when you cannot take the exam no more for AWS SysOps, right? So it's going to change. So the new exam is going to be available on September 9th for AWS Cloud Ops. All right, so let's take a look at this here. So the exam, AWS Certified Cloud Engineer, which is the Associate Level Engineer, is going to be available to take the exam on September 9th, right? The last day that you can take the former exam, AWS Certified SysOps Administrator, is gonna be September 29th. Now, this is, just, this is not just a rename. This is a restructuring of the scope of the exam. It still has the same domains, but the scope is going to change and be more modern and up to date to what we have today. Now, so this is on the AWS website, right? Now, the current providers that you can get AWS SysOps training now is July 20th today, right? So you want to get started now if you're not ready, okay? So Code Cloud has a really good AWS uh, SysOps Administrator exam. I'm in the process of updating my exam. My AWS Solutions Architect expired, so I'm in the process of taking the SysOps Administrator exam. So it kind of caught me off guard when I seen the change of the exam, right? So you're having to study a lot more stuff for Docker and Kubernetes and EKS, et cetera. So instead of going through all of that new change that's coming, go ahead and focus on what's available today. Get certified and then give yourself some time because it's going to be two different badges, right? It's not, it's not just an exam rename. So this exam is SA02, the, the new exam is gonna be 03. So it's a different exam, right? Which is a different certification and a different badge. It's gonna take time for the industry to kind of catch, kind of catch up and, and, and you, you're gonna to need to learn. All right, so if not Code Cloud, Adrian Cantrell, he has a SysOps Administrator uh, a course, which is actually really good, right? You can also use AWS Skill Builder. That's another one that you can use. All right, so Skill Builder has a learning plan specifically for uh, AWS SysOps that you can follow step by step. There's a number of portions of the learning plan that is free. As you see, there's no subscription tied there. But then when you get hit with the subscription, it's $29 a month. So what I would say is before jumping out and paying immediately, go ahead and finish up all the free stuff first. Then when you get the, the, the subscription task, pay for it and basically use it for the month or two months, however long, you don't have a lot of time though. It's almost two months, the September 29th, if you wanna to get to the end, but you wanna give yourself some time to retest in case you don't do well, right? Um, so, but get through all of the free courses first and then go back to the subscription courses and pay for it and, and, and bang it all out, right? So, um, as you can see here, and I, I, you know, I wanna show this to people because people take it for a joke, right? There are jobs that actually literally require the AWS Certified SysOps Administrator exam, right? So this is one job from Base Systems, as you can see here. And here's another one from Paraton out of the DC metro area. And as you can see here, required. So here's the thing for people that don't understand government contracts, right? One of the bare minimum certifications that you need to have in order to get your security clearance or your privilege user access or administrative permissions is you have to have the CompTIA Security Plus. That's the bare minimum, bare minimum certification to be able to just get access to a privileged or secure environment, right? Now, after you have the CompTIA Security Plus, um, there's some different uh, certifications you can't have, but, but that's the bare minimum, right? <laughs> the second tier level is like, if you're working on an AWS environment, uh, if the job requires it, AWS SysOps. So here's the thing. Solutions Architect is not going to measure your hands-on ability. It's not. It's basically a paper cert. <laughs> you know, I passed it, and I'm going to tell you the truth. When I first passed the SysOps, I just memorized a bunch of stuff. I went through a lot of the uh, exercises. I mean, I did some hands-on, but I didn't do a ton of it 
at the time years ago when I passed it. So I was still having the training wheels on, but SysOps is different. You you actually have to touch the keyboard and actually do the work. And you will not pass the exam if you haven't done any hands-on. You can't, right? <laughs> so um, just keep that in mind. Now, for the people that don't understand what I'm saying, and this is more catered towards the folks that are working on government contracts, um, there's something called DOD 8140, right? So this has to do with how the DOD deals with the cyber workforce, et cetera. So let me just go over real fast. It's a, it's a long, very broad topic, but I'm not going to go into everything. All right, so go to qualification matrix. All right, then you go down, blah, blah, blah. All right, open up the spreadsheet. I don't know why they have this in the damn spreadsheet. But government's old school. So anyway, um, certification repository. So this is just kind of, you can see certification index. So these are like the certifications that are acceptable for a uh, level one, level two, basically authorization to be able to get access to privileged systems, right? So you see Security X, pen test, um, you have the SAN search, which is the GCFA, GCIH, et cetera, pen test plus, which is CompTIA. Um, and you can, you, can, you can see the different certifications here that would be acceptable. Now, some older environments don't have all of the 8140. They got the old version of the uh, Department of Defense cybersecurity certs. So here's the thing. Before you go off and get all these, if you're going to work as a government contractor for the federal government, U.S. federal government, then you want to have one of these baseline certs that are required for the government. Um, Cloud Plus is not going to help you right? Uh, some of these mundane certs are not going to help you. So what will help you are the GSAN certs, the CompTIA uh, Security Plus is like a mandatory like baseline. If you don't have it, you may find yourself having a challenge. And, I, and I'll give you like an example here. Uh, let's go to another. And look at, the, look at the salaries on here, right? So these ranges, like this one here is Geon Technologies in Columbia, Maryland. You see, Look at this, another one, required, AWS certified, SysOps administrator, required, right? So here's the thing. If you don't have it, they're just not going to interview you. <laughs> you can hem and haul, complain, talk about my experience. Man, nobody want to hear all that. Anyway, so especially when you have a lot of competition out here. And, you know, like this was 179000 you probably can push it up to that. That's just what they're advertising, right? Now, let's take a look at um, Geon Technologies and... So it requires a security clearance, which means you have to be a citizen. And let's see here. I've seen one here. Let's go up. Go up. As you can see here, CompTIA Security Plus required. So a lot of these jobs, and this is the uh, Washington, D.C., Virginia, North Virginia, uh, the entire Virginia Philadelphia, Maryland, you know, that area corridor of where the federal government is. So in this on the East Coast, it's extremely popular that you have to have a mandatory certification for a security clearance to be able to get access to the environments. Right. So I just want to explain these things to you kind of shortly. But there are a lot of jobs that do require having the certification. So and it's going to take time to get that information out there about cloud ops, et cetera. So this is the link on uh linkedin um uh, you can connect with me on linkedin and get the information but and i'll and i'll drop it into the comments below but this is something that you definitely want to make sure that you get updated with the aws certified system administrator before september 29th and you want to give yourself about you know two weeks uh, or a week minimum if you fail and you need to retest right so just kind of keep that in mind but like I said, new exam is coming. And there was one gentleman that was kind of explaining some of the content. Let's let's go back here. Where's the guy's name? A little more comments. Uh, God of Japan. And one of the things that he was explaining, I'm not sure if he has anything to do with the exam, but he was saying here, this change brings about an updated exam scope, including containers multi-account and multi-region architectures and a deeper focus on automation and infrastructure as code that's a lot more stuff to study right so 
just <laughs> just understand that change happens in IT and you have to be able to rapidly adapt to change. And if you can't, I don't know what to tell you, right? It's very competitive out there. You got a lot of people losing jobs, but there are a lot of cloud opportunities still. AI is, is a huge change for like software engineers, stuff like that. But cloud engineers, DevOps engineers are going to be needed because they need somebody to architect the platforms. Cybersecurity is definitely going to be needed. They're, they're going to get hit pretty hard with AI also because of a lot of automation. But on the back end, a lot of the um, penetration testing, a lot of these other exercises, they're still going to exist. So the three fields that are going to be valuable over time, cybersecurity, cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, guarantee you will eat. But you got to keep pace, keep pace with the industry. Or, <laughs> or you might end up a plumber. Or HVAC tech or electrician or something. I don't know what the <laughs> you know what I mean, but um, I hope this helps and I wish you the best. Keep hustling and keep trying. All right, peace out.